again, one on that side. And to that skirt, I'm going to put that one right next, I would add a, uh, a hoop. And the hoops were made out of cane, willow, and wicker. And they were just beginning to use whalebone for this kind of thing. And when I have a combination of a hoop and a bum roll, I have a garment that is called a farthingale. This is the understructure of my skirt. Now I need you to use your imagination and picture I have another four or five skirts on. to get one look, or I can open it up to show the underskirt. Now this underskirt is made out of brocade, and during this time period, this would be real gold and real silver thread. So rarely would I want to spend the money for the 12 yards needed for a skirt. So I'd make the back part out of a cheaper material. But I made sure to tie the overskirts to the underskirt, so the wind didn't show the other courtiers how cheap I'd been. That would be the ultimate of embarrassment. <laughs> now, I would buy my fabric by a traveling fabric man coming to my manor house. He'd lay out his wares and he'd say, oh, I like this, 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 and this. He'd go to a room at the back of my manor house where my tailor lived. And my tailor would say, all right, I need nine yards of this, 16 yards of this, three yards of that. And he'd lay out the fabric and take a small pair of sheep shears and just cut the fabric. For there were no patterns for making clothes at this time. Now, a yard of fabric was from your fingertips to your shoulder. So when you hired a tailor, you looked for a guy with really long arms. So you got more fabric for your money that way. Okay, now we come to it. The instrument of torture. This is an Elizabethan corset. And before we do this, I need a drink. <laughs> and I need my good sturdy bedpost to come on up at this point. And I'll have you come stand over here. Okay, you ladies remember if you go straight across the top and then lace it like a shoe. All right. Now, while they're lacing me into my corset, give me a warning before you pull, please. <laughs> while they're lacing me into my corset, let me talk a little bit about corsetry. The stays, that which makes a corset stiff, during this time was made out of wood. The look was not to have a tiny little waist. That belongs to the Victorians in the 19th century. What these people were looking for was a flatness in front and actually adding some bulk around the body. So that, that's the, the main part of this. All right, let me know how you guys are doing back there. Yes, yes, do a, a pull at this point. Pull, ladies, pull! <laughs> okay, that's good. Now, one of the leading causes of death of these women <laughs> was that they would lace their corsets so tightly that the floating ribs, the ribs that are not attached to your sternum, would puncture the nearby organs and they'd bleed to death internally. But they made no connection that the corset was a cause of this. These, these women were also very vain creatures. When they would get invited to a court ball and they were six or seven months pregnant, you need to pull? Okay, Paul. Mm. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Um, when they were six or seven months pregnant, they would pull their corset so tightly, they would miscarry their children. And this is another reason why the nobility died out. Now, when you ladies get down to the bottom, do me a favor. Tie it in a bow. Please don't tie it in a knot. Okay. You don't need to pull much on the bottom. Okay. Yep. Two, three. Okay, good. There you go. Okay, tie it. While you're tying it, I'm just going to turn a little bit towards the audience here. Now, and you just stay here, okay? Now, this part here is called a busk, B-U-S-K. It's a carved piece of bone or a carved piece of wood with a ribbon tied into it, tying it into place. Now, if you were really enamored of somebody, you would give them the ribbon to your busk. 
But you really got to like this guy a lot because he's going to wear this ribbon on his sleeve. This is called wearing your heart on your sleeve. Everybody's going to know it's a bus ribbon and everybody's going to know where it came from. And this ribbon survives today as the bow between the cups of a modern brazier. And this is where it comes from, is holding this wood piece in place during the time of Shakespeare. Now, this is a pretty dead uh, space here, but let's see if we can get it where you can hear this. You cannot feel the human body underneath this. I can bend at the knees, I can bend at the hips, but woe be it to me if I sneeze. For there is nowhere for my body to expand in this, and it's a very painful thing to do in a corset. 